How are you doing tonight, church? How are you doing home at line, online? Well, that was such a big response. I'm kind of, no, you guys can take your seats. Who's excited to be back in the room at church? I'm so grateful that we can be gathered again. I love our church. I've grown up in our church and I don't know about you. I'm also so grateful for our senior pastors, Brian and Bobby. Who's grateful that we get to have them as our pastors? I know that I am and I know that I mean this with all my heart. I literally wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for them. But I'm just so excited for the opportunity that we have to be gathered tonight because I believe without a shadow of a doubt that God wants to move in our midst. Does anybody have faith for that tonight? Is anyone expectant that God wants to do breakthrough in your life tonight? Let me hear you if you're expectant for that tonight. I wanna encourage you, I wanna challenge you to open up your heart in this moment and be expectant for the God who created the heavens and the earth to speak to you and I in this moment. I'm so confident that God is wanting to move in our midst and I'm really believing that before we leave tonight, we're gonna see God's Spirit pour out in a fresh and new way and that we get to actually walk out of this place differently so do I have anyone with me tonight? I feel it. You are at line. Why did I say at line again? It's the new thing. We love that you're at line tonight. But hey, I wanna pray. Father, I just thank you for this opportunity that we can be gathered in your presence and in your house. Lord, I thank you for the power of your spirit. I thank you that everything that you've done for every single one of us. And Lord, we just open up our hearts again with expectancy. I thank you for the truth of your word. Lord, that it has the power to transform our lives. And Father, I thank You for the miracle that happened on Thursday night at Bankwest Stadium, that the mighty Parramatta Eels in the middle of the pouring rain were able to beat the Melbourne Storm. We give You praise for everything You're doing. In Jesus' mighty Name, if you believe it, would you shout Amen? Amen, Amen. amen. Listen, it rarely happens, so I've got to give it a shout out. But, um, you know, tonight I want to talk about something that every single one of us need. It's something that you will need just to go to school. And it's been a little while since I went to school, but it's something that I needed and you would have needed to go to school. It's something that you need where if you wanna play a sport or play an instrument, it's definitely something that you need if you're ever gonna get the courage to ask that special friend to become your official special friend. And you're definitely gonna need this if you ask that special friend, if you propose and ask them to be your husband or wife. This is something that you need when you go for a job interview and it's something that you need to keep your job every day at work. It's definitely something that you need as a parent and it's absolutely necessary if you ever cough or sneeze in public from now on. And uh, more importantly, it's something that you need to fulfil what God is calling you to do with your life. Do you wanna know what I'm talking about? Tonight, I wanna talk about confidence. Wow, there we go. But I don't wanna just talk about confidence to sneeze in public or ask a girl out. I'm, tonight I wanna talk about a bold, godly confidence. A bold, godly confidence. Because the truth is, we all need confidence to do what it is that God has created us to do. And I'm not talking about being the loudest person in a room, because sometimes it can actually be an inner quiet strength to maybe withstand a storm maybe to walk through a season that was unexpected or unwanted. But can I tell you that what God is calling each and every single one of us to do, we are gonna need a bold and godly confidence. And the good news is, is that we can get that from God. But the truth is being confident doesn't come naturally to all of us. And it's something that we can lose. And if we read Hebrews 10 verse 35, it says, So do not throw away your confidence, for it will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you receive what He has promised. You know, if we can keep our confidence, if we can build the lives of boldly godly confidence, then we can actually receive all that God has promised us. And I don't know whether you realise this or not, but God has promised us so much. Not just His love and His peace and His mercy and His grace and His forgiveness, also salvation, eternity with Him, but He's also promised us an incredible plan and purpose here on earth. God hasn't put you here by accident. God has designed a specific role for you to fulfil in life. And the truth is, if we're gonna be able to step into that, we need a bold, godly confidence. And I wanna encourage us tonight. I wanna put courage into each and every single one of us that we can live the kind of lives 
that regardless of what our experience has been or what we look to on the inside, that we can be bold and confident in a God who loves us and trusts us and has a purpose for us. Amen? Amen. So just simply with the few moments that I have, I wanna encourage us around a few ways that we can be the kind of people to build a bold, godly confidence and not lose it and not throw it away and step into all that God has for us. Because who knows that for our church, the greatest days are still ahead, right? We're in the middle of restrictions, so it's a little bit, uh, you know, there's seats in between us, but I believe that what God is wanting to do through our church, that we haven't seen it before. I believe what God wants to do in your life, we actually haven't seen before. The Bible actually says that no eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has in store for those who love Him. And so I wanna stir you up tonight, if that's all right. So I hope you don't get too comfortable because I believe that God wants to stir something inside of each and every one of us. And so if we're going to build a bold, godly confidence, the first thing I wanna say is the way that you see yourself matters. The way you see yourself matters. What do you see when you look in the mirror? I don't know what it is. I think it's human nature. We look in the mirror and we tend to see what we don't like or what's not there. You know, during COVID, if I'm honest, I found a few extra kilos. That's right. And um, I made a decision a few weeks ago that I was going to try and lose these extra kilos. And so I went to the gym two days in a row. Yeah. And I looked in front of the mirror and I was like, where's the abs? Has anyone done that? You eat healthy for like until midday and you're like, hang on. You know, my best friend growing up is, is a guy, his name's Scotty, and he is really tall. And I remember always looking at him going, I wish I was tall like Scotty. And, you know, because he could reach for things. And if we kicked a ball on the roof, like just, you know, on his tippy toes, he'd be able to get it off. And I remember going to a concert one time and it was a really good concert. I was enjoying the music. And I remember looking at Scotty next to me and I was thinking, oh, I wish I was tall as Scotty because he could see the band. And then I was like there, I'm kind of, I could just see, but I'm on my tippy toes looking in between shoulders. Anyone remember when we were able to go to live music and it was like that? And here I'm going, oh man, if I was as tall as Scotty, I'd be loving this. And it's so funny because we leave the concert and I ask him, oh, you know, did you enjoy it? He's like, yeah, the band was good, but I kind of couldn't fully enjoy it because I was standing there just feeling so bad that people behind me couldn't see, you know, I'm just too tall. And I'm like, wow, you're a saint for thinking about people like that. But I thought it's so funny that how, you know, we can always, we look in the mirror and we see what's not there. And I think if we're gonna build a confidence, a boldly confidence, we need to see ourselves as God sees us. I love Psalm 139, verse 13 and 14. It says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. You know, this is a scripture that if you've been coming to church or reading the Bible for a while that I'm sure you've come across. And I know I have all my life, but I was reading it again recently and being reminded that, you know, I was actually knitted together in my mother's womb. And I wanna remind people tonight, maybe I get the privilege of sharing this scripture for the very first time that, you know, you were actually put in your womb, not by your parents on the, well, we're not gonna go there, but um, the truth is that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, that God has created and designed you for a specific purpose, that you are not an accident. You are not a complete disappointment. You are incredibly valuable. You are one of a kind and our DNA proves that, that our fingerprints and in our blood, that there's actually never been anyone like you, that there'll never be anyone like you, that God has made you fearfully and wonderfully made. And I think the first step for us, if we're gonna be the kind of people that step into what God has called us to do, and let me tell you, we're gonna need a bold and godly confidence. We have to understand the way we see ourselves matter, the way that we see ourselves matters. And if we're gonna step into what God's got for us, we've gotta see ourselves fearfully and wonderfully made, that we are made in the image of God, that we're a child of God. And secondly, which it flows straight on, is we've gotta be content with what we see. You know, I don't know what it is about human nature and culture. With all of its best intentions, it kind of leaves ourselves comparing ourselves with each other. And you know, comparison kills. But you know, being content with who you are will kill comparison and then you'll be able to build confidence. Comparison will just leave us copying other people and either feeling better or worse than they are. And that's not how we're called to do this life. And I think about when I first started singing, I do do a little bit of singing, prove it, no. Uh, <laughs> I actually feel like I can't dance for the record, but anyway, that doesn't matter. Um, I remember when I first started singing and I would 
just compare myself to everyone else who was on the stage and that was leading worship and singing and they could all sing really, really good and they could sing really, really high. And I remember thinking, all right, if I've gonna be a good singer, I've gotta sing as high as them and as good as them. And so I thought, all right, let's go. So early on, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna sing as absolutely high as I can. And so the moment came and there was like, you know, I thought, here we go, I'm gonna shoot for the stars. And I did, but um, I don't know what came, what kind of screech came out of my voice through the microphone because everyone's hands were in the air. And then as soon as I went for this note, their hands just went like this. <laughs> and, um, and the truth is, I realised very quickly, thank the Lord, that I don't have the highest voice. And when I actually realised that I can just be content with the voice that God's given me, I actually realised I didn't have to lose my voice every single time that I sung. And it actually stopped physical pain, which is incredible. But not only that, one of the bonuses of me figuring out that I have a lower voice is when we first started touring around with Hillsong United, we'd go to radio stations and do these live interviews on air. And it was freaky because none of us had ever really been overseas, let alone been on live radio. And to kind of break the ice, the guys used to just joke and say to the radio host, hey, this is JD, he's got a low voice. He can sing like Johnny Cash, go do it. And I'd be like, oh. I'd be like I fell into a burning ring of fire. I went down, 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 and the flames went higher. And it burns, burns, burns. The ring of fire, the ring of fire. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm a closet Johnny Cash fan. <laughs> but the truth is, a bold godly confidence is built when we are content with how God has created us to be. I think about Philippians 4.11, it says, Paul writes, I'm not saying this because I'm in need. For listen to this, I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstance. I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether having plenty or being in want. I can do all things through Him who gives me strength. You know, the secret, if we're gonna be content, if we're gonna see ourselves the way that God sees us, if we're gonna be able to be content with what we see, we have to understand that God is with you, that God is on our side. And with Him, there is nothing that we cannot do or we cannot get through. The secret of being content is understanding that we can do anything that God calls us to do because of His strength and because He is in and with everyone, every single one of us. And I wanna encourage you tonight and maybe remind you, I believe what it is that God is calling you and I to step into. His plans, His purpose, the future for your life. We're gonna need a bold and godly confidence for that. And one of the greatest ways that we can make sure that we don't throw away our confidence in a moment because of a situation or a circumstance, that you can actually be content with the way that God made you. And you can see yourself in exactly the same way that God created you, which is in His image, fearfully and wonderfully made. If you're grateful for it, you can say, Amen. 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 And the third, uh, yeah, let's actually all clap. One in, all in. We may as well clap. Even online, you can give a clap. The third thing I want to encourage us, and then I'm really believing that we're going to experience God's power and He's going to do something incredible in this place and there online. Got it. <laughs> is we need to, and I love, this is really simple, which is good news. But if we are going to build the kind of lives, stand on a bold, godly confidence, we need to live in line with God's Word. You know, your age is never gonna hold you back in life. You're never too old and you're never too young to step into what God has for your life. Your age won't hold you back. But you know, the decisions that we make, Ken, and the way that we live our life, it matters. In 1 Timothy 4, verse 12, Paul writes to Timothy, Timothy saying, don't let anyone look down on you because you're young. But set an example for the believers in speech, conduct, love, faith and purity. And until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture and to the preaching and teaching. And you see, the direct context of this passage is that Timothy was potentially facing insecurities because of his age, of what God was calling him to do in leading the church and fulfil his purpose. But Paul's remedy for this is to set an example in the way that he lives, in his conduct and also to devote himself to Scripture. And can I give you the greatest advice I could give anyone? Read this book. Read this book. You know, if we want to make the right choices and if we want to build the kind of confidence to step out into what God has called us, we need to read this book. You know, I love that we can um, binge 
TV series on certain streaming platforms. I'm all about it. I love that we can uh, listen to podcasts and read other books for inspiration and help. And that's all good. I'm a fan, but I wanna encourage you first and foremost, let's go to the book first. Let's read the Word of God. You know, I don't know whether it is that you watch and what you love. Maybe you're into love stories. Who is a bit of a, who loves watching the love stories? Yep, my hand is up. I love a love story. Why wouldn't you? It goes better when you watch it with your wife. But hey, the greatest love story ever told is in this book. Maybe you are a bit of an action fan. You love the battles and, and, and those kind of movies. Can I tell you the greatest battles, they're crazy. You won't even believe them is when you re read this book. You know, maybe you listen to a podcast because you want leadership and there's so many great things out there. But can I tell you, the greatest leadership principles you're ever gonna find is in this book. Maybe you're looking for wisdom. The greatest way you're gonna find wisdom is to go to this book. Maybe you need financial freedom. The greatest way that you are gonna find that is build your finances in your life and live in line with the Word of God. Because the truth is we all are faced with things where we don't know what to say. We don't even know what to do. And sometimes if we're honest, we don't even know what to think. But can I tell you, when you're unsure what to say or what to do or what to think, we can go to the Word of God and we can always find the answers for any situation in God's Word. You know, the Bible actually tells us to read the Bible. In Hebrews 12, verse three, and in the message, it says, when you find yourself flagging in your faith, go over that story again, item by item, that long litany of hostility that He ploughed through, and that will shoot adrenaline into your soul. When you find yourself flagging in your faith, go over that story again, line by line, item by item. And maybe that's you tonight, online or here, and you're not alone. We all go through those stages and seasons that you might feel like because of what's been going on over the last year that you find, if you're honest, that you feel like your faith is flagging. But I wanna encourage you to do what the Bible actually says. And I've had to do it and I love it because it works as it says, because it is the truth that Take the time, even, hey, a little homework, a little take home for tonight is take this week and read through the Gospels. Pick Mark, it's the shortest one, but go through again. Hey, I'm all about the, keeping it simple and short as possible. But what I know is that when we actually read the account of who Jesus was, He actually teaches us how to live. He teaches us how to think. He shows us the greatest ways to respond. And sometimes if we spend too much time out of this book, then I know when I go back to it, it's crazy to think that how clearly Jesus made a way for us and teaches us how to do it. And I believe that if we're gonna live the kind of lives and fulfil all that God has for us and build a bold and godly confidence for us to be able to do everything that He's calling us to do, which is beyond anything that we could think, dream or imagine. We need to see ourselves as God sees us. We need to be content with what we see and we need to live according and in line with the Word of God. And fourth thing that I wanna encourage and share with us here tonight is that if we're gonna build this confidence and I have absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, believe that God is going to build up an incredible confidence in each and every one of you to face whatever it is that you might face tonight when you go home or maybe that's facing you tomorrow. But the fourth thing is this, is know where to run and hide. Know where to run and hide. I think two of the greatest games ever created, they're actually not on PlayStation or the Xbox. And I don't think you can get an app for it either, is hide and seek and knock and run. <laughs> Hide and seek and knock and run. That's right. You know, being in the season that my wife and I, and we've got three small kids, and so we are playing hide and seek again. And can I tell you what? I am so much better the second time around at hide and seek. It is so fun. And, uh, you know, I think about knock and run, and maybe it's because, and Jad and Crocker can testify because they have been with us when we've done so many trips with our United team. And in the early days, our youth pastor was Phil Dooley, who loves and knows Phil Dooley, who's over in Africa, building our church there. And we would get out of the, uh, the lift, uh, whatever hotel we were staying at. And I don't know why, but I felt like every time my room was the last one in the hallway and we got our big suitcases and musical equipment and the doors would open and Phil would see the first door that he could and knock on it as hard and as quick as he can. And we would just begin to run. And it was like this feeling of, are we gonna make it? Are we not? Can the key, is it gonna work? Is there gonna be a head that pokes out? And it's actually the funnest game. And maybe this exposes a little bit of where my maturity is at, but still to this day, when I stay at a hotel or even sometimes just walking down the street, I just get this little urge inside going, 
Should I, shouldn't I? It's fun, they're good games, right? But life isn't a game. And we need to know where to run and where to hide. And it kind of sounds a little bit counterintuitive to be telling you to run and to hide. But I wanna tell you to run in the right direction and to hide in the right place because the Bible actually tells us to do this. In Romans 12, nine, it says, run for dear life from evil. And sometimes we need to make it as simple as that. Maybe you just need to turn around and walk in the other direction. Maybe you need to just stop going to that place or stop hanging out with that person if it's, gonna, if it's not gonna be building your godly confidence. We need to run from evil. Psalm 31 verse five, it's talking about God as saying, you're my cave to hide in. Psalm 32 verse seven, God's my island hideaway. Everyone close your eyes for a second. They're at home online. Imagine a island hideaway. How good does that already make you feel? All right, come back, come back. Eyes open, eyes open. (laughs) You know, if we're gonna have a bold, godly confidence, we need to know where to run and where to hide. And if I'm gonna be completely honest, which for the record I am tonight, I don't know why I said that, but uh, last year, probably for the first time ever, I found myself actually feeling anxious for the first time. And I think I'm not alone in that. And a lot of people went through an unexpected and unwanted year. And I found myself not being able to fall asleep some nights. And I found myself waking up extremely early in the morning, which is really crazy because what you've got to understand is I have a gift of sleeping like a log. Just ask my wife. I can sometimes be hard to wake up in the morning and you can just ask my daughter. I've shared it before, but as a nine-year-old taking her to Ghana, the other side of the world, I sleep through her vomiting all night and we're in the same room. I couldn't wake up. I've got a gift of sleeping. But I found myself in a season where I just couldn't sleep and I was worrying about things that were out of my control and that I didn't understand. But I'm glad that I have the revelation and have learnt the truth of God's Word to know where to run and where to hide. And I just made the decision and found myself in the randomest hours of the night or early in the morning, just grabbing my Bible first. And I would read Scriptures like Psalm 34 verse 2. And this was a big one for me. It says, I live and breathe God. If things aren't going well, hear this and be happy. Join me in spreading the news. Together, let's get the Word out. God met me more than halfway. He freed me from my anxious fears. Look at Him. Give Him your warmest smile. Never hide your feelings from Him. And this is the truth of the God that we serve. And I'm not, I can't tell that I read that one time and that I never had an anxious feeling again. But I can tell you, as I just made the commitment to run and hide to God first, that I did begin to sense His presence. And don't get me wrong for one second. I think that it is so important. There are some incredible professionals that can help us with so many things. And I would encourage you through your connect group or through our incredible pastoral care team to be able to seek help that I believe God has created for us. But what I also wanna say is, don't neglect running and hiding to God as well. Because the truth is that God will meet you more than halfway. I wanna remind you, God is not far away from you right now. You actually find the moment you turn to Him, He is there. He meets us more than halfway. I love that it says, never hide your feelings from Him. Can I remind you again that we don't have to come before God feeling like we've got it all together like you do because you don't, neither do I. That's okay, we're on the journey. But it says, never hide your feelings from Him, that we can actually look at God the way that we are. And you know when it's then, when we're just there as simply and honestly as we can manage, that's when we begin to feel and sense the grace of God. And you're gonna find that when you look at God, He's not gonna be looking at you like this. He's gonna be like this. He knows everything about you, but He loves you. The Bible tells us there's nothing that can separate us from His love. So hey, there's nothing that you've done last night that you might be holding on to, or even maybe 10 years ago, that is so bad that's gonna stop Jesus from being like, hey, I got you, I love you. Don't worry, come to me, I am your island hideaway. And the moment we actually humble ourselves and spend time in the presence of God, it's when we feel His grace. That mercy that the Bible talks about, that every single morning it's fresh and it's new. And I believe that if we're gonna live with a bold, godly confidence that we need to do what God's called us to do, that He's promised for us to do, that we gotta know where to run and hide. And the final thing is this, I want the team to come and join me. Everyone doing okay? How are we doing online? Whoa, that hurt, that was big. 
The final thing is this, is if we are going to, like Hebrews says, not throw away our confidence, but understand that as we persevere, that we're gonna receive all that God has promised for us, is put your confidence in the right place. Put your confidence in the right place. Now, I don't really understand why, and I share a bit about this because we've been doing it for over 20 years, but with Hillsong United, we have had the opportunity to go to some of the most incredible places. And we've played in Los Angeles, at the Staples Centre, where the famous LA Lakers play. And I feel like LeBron James at the moment is tearing it up there. And we've also played at the Hollywood Bowl. And this is a very iconic venue. Some of the greatest of the greatest musicians have played there, the Beatles to say the least. And when we saw their names on the wall, I kind of thought it was cool. Um, we played at Red Rocks in Denver. This is like easily the most iconic outdoor amphitheatre. There's these big red rocks that God has literally just created an amphitheatre out of. You know, we've played in, all over the world, in Brazil, in Sao Paulo, where we had this one time, there was a crowd where you literally couldn't see where it ended. And, and in recent times, we played at Madison Square Garden and we recorded that and we, we show it usually before and after services. And it was incredible. And we actually sold all of those places out. And I'm not saying that to go, hey, look how awesome we are. I'm saying that because to stand on those platforms in front of all those people is freaky. It's so scary, especially if you know me. And I know that God's got a sense of humour because the idea of holding a microphone and standing on a platform was always something that just freaked me out. And people would ask me, how do you deal with your nerves? I'm like, don't ask me because I don't know. I wanna throw up every time I get on stage. That was just me. But it did all change and it almost changed overnight when I read this one Scripture. And I really believe this is gonna help so many people. If you're gonna be able to embrace and build a bold, godly confidence in your life so you can do whatever it is that God is even calling you to do this week, next week, in years to come. And it's found in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 12 and 13. Don't be so naive and self-confident. You're not exempt. You could fall flat on your face as easily as anyone else. Forget about self-confidence, it's useless. Cultivate God confidence. No test or temptation that comes your way is beyond the course of what others have had to face. All you need to remember is that God will never let you down. He'll never let you be pushed past your limit. He'll always be there to help you come through it. And I remember reading this, forget about self-confidence, it's useless. Cultivate God confidence. And I realised that I was hanging my confidence on myself. And it wasn't being overconfident, it was the opposite because I realised that, you know, I can't change a life. But, but what I am confident is that God can and in His presence in a millisecond, a miracle can happen and everything can change. And I'm so grateful that I am so confident in God and, and I, I'm not very confident in myself, but when I, I read that Scripture and realised, hang on, when I think about God and what He can do and who He is and what He's done and what is to come, then you can't convince me otherwise of the truth of God's Word. And, and, and I remember as a four-year-old boy, I've got a really uh, clear memory of, I think my dad was away for a couple of days and I was probably whinging to my mum that I missed him and I was scared or something. And I remember her going, it's okay, he's coming back in a couple of days, but you also have a Father in Heaven who created you and He'll never leave you and never forsake you. He'll always be with you. And I was like, oh, that sounds pretty good. What's next? And she's like, just let's pray this prayer. My mum led me in the sinner's prayer as a four-year-old. And what I can tell you, that from that day to this, like yours, my life hasn't been perfect. It's not always easy. There are seasons that are great and there are some that are not so great. And there are seasons where I just don't understand. But what I can absolutely tell you without a shadow of a doubt, that God has never let me down. He has never let me be pushed past my limit. Close though. <laughs> and He's always been there to help me come through it. And so when I think about who God is and the truth of His Word, I can be so confident because I forget about self-confidence and I cultivate God confidence. And I wanna encourage us, if we're gonna do like what Hebrews says and make sure that we don't throw away our confidence, but we actually build it and hold on to it so that we can do all that God's called us to do. Let's, hey, understand the way we see ourselves matters. Let's be content with what we see, knowing that God is with us. And if He's with us, there's nothing that we can't do. Let's live our lives according to God's Word and turn to His Word first. Let's know where to run and hide and let's place our confidence in Him. And I want us all to stand because we've got a few moments left and we won't be too long, but I actually really believe that God is speaking to us tonight. I know His Word is powerful and I don't know all of you, obviously, 
But what I do know is that God is with you and God is with me. And I think about one of the most confident people in the Bible. We all know him, David, right? We know that famous story where David uh, has the battle with Goliath. Talk about a guy who is confident in God. Let me recap it in like 30 seconds. Here, David comes before Goliath, who is like over nine feet tall. He's covered in armour. He has the best weaponry. He is a legend of a fighter. He's never lost. And then David comes. He's never been in a battle against anyone before. He's got no armour because it doesn't fit him. He doesn't have any of the swords or the shields or the javelins. He does have a couple of rocks and he's got a slingshot. And Goliath sees him coming towards him and laughs because he sees that he doesn't have all the things that he should have that everyone else has. He's got no armour. He's never fought before. He's a young boy. And Goliath actually laughs at him. And you know what he says? This is a bit gory, but it's in the Bible, so don't judge me. He says that not only is He going to kill him, but He's going to rip his flesh and feed it to wild animals. And he's laughing. That's what he's saying to David. David has got no armour, no real weapons, a couple of rocks. Goliath's laughing at him, telling him what he's going to do. And guess what David says to Goliath? He says, I come against you in the Name of the Lord Almighty. He knew where to put his confidence. He wasn't confident that he didn't have the right armour or the right weapons, but he said, I come against you in the Name of the Lord Almighty. And we know how the story goes, that David defeats Goliath. Talk about someone who knew where to place his confidence, not in his own ability. He knew how to see himself as God had created him. You know he'd been preparing, he knew how to be in God's presence. And the truth is we all face Goliaths. And I don't know what your Goliath is that you're facing that you might be going home to tonight or that you might be facing tomorrow morning. But I really wanna believe that God is going to give you and I a bold godly confidence to face whatever it is that He puts in, fr in front of us. I love Pastor Brian's been talking about Rescue, restore, rebuild, and that is for our church, but it's also for you and for I. And if we are gonna rebuild, if we're gonna face whatever God has for us, which is greater than what we've ever seen before, we're gonna need a bold confidence for the journey. I don't know, maybe it's a work situation right now and you don't have the strategy. I wanna remind you, look to God for the strategy. Yes, let's get help from business podcasts, but let's also look for the divine wisdom of the Holy Spirit. And so we're gonna sing, we're gonna take a few moments, but I don't know, maybe it's anxiety or depression or a feeling of loneliness that's your Goliath. Maybe it is an addiction that is holding on to you or a sense of shame from your past, something that you can't control. Maybe it is that you feel like you're too old and that your time has passed or that you're too young. Maybe you have a health issue right now that is holding you back and it feels like a Goliath. Maybe there's a financial restriction over you that you can't see a way out of. I don't know what you're facing, what you're going through, what you need, this God, this God bold confidence. But I believe that right now in, the mo in this moment, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that His truth of His Word is gonna stir confidence and it might happen in a second. But you know what, even if it doesn't, I believe that to be able to step out of this place every day, that we can be more confident on the truth of God's Word, more confident on the power of His Spirit. So I wanna pray for you. I believe it's all of us. So if you know that's you and whatever that Goliath is, why don't we all lift our hands here and even online. I'm just gonna pray that God moves and speaks and does something so real and so fresh and so clear for you to leave this place knowing the direction, knowing the strategy, knowing the confidence in the power of the Holy Spirit. So Father, we just thank You for who You are. Lord, we thank You for all that You've done. But Lord God, we look to all that You are about to do. Father, I thank You for the truth that You haven't put anyone here by accident. Lord God, that You have specifically designed with an incredible purpose. Lord, Lord, for us to accomplish what it is that You've designed us to. So Lord, I pray that Your Spirit would pour out right now on Your people. Lord God, that You'd bring confidence, Lord, a bold, godly confidence for us to do what You've called us to do and to be who You've called us to be in Your mighty Name. Come on, let's sing.